to question number six. Regarding neonatal uh, lupus erythematosus, which of the following statement is false? There are four statements given. NLE is the topic we are talking about. So, first is no active immune dysregulation in the child, a risk associated with anti Rho, anti La, and anti RNP antibodies. Mother with severe symptomatic SLE have a higher risk of producing neonatal lupus erythematosus. And fourth is can even develop in children born to mothers having Jogner's syndrome. We need to understand here what exactly is neonatal lupus erythematosus. The child does not have autoimmunity. The mother has SLE or some similar uh, autoimmune condition, right? Majorly it is SLE. It can also develop uh, due to antibodies uh, in other syndromes like Jogren syndrome. Nelson clearly says about 50% uh, mothers can have uh, other uh, autoimmune conditions also. The point is anti rho anti la anti RNP antibodies should be there in the mother. So these antibodies. Uh, particularly the IgG variety of these antibodies can cross the placenta, there is a passive transfer and they can produce manifestations in the child, they can produce complication in the child, that is what you call as neonatal LE. So there is no active immune dysregulation in the child, right? So option A is a true statement. Obviously, anti rho anti-la, anti-RNP, these are the antibodies with which maximum risk has been shown, so they, the risk is associated with these two. Now have a look at option number D, it can even develop in children born to mother having Zogren syndrome is a true statement, Nelson clearly says that it can develop if the mother is having SLE, it can develop in the child if the mother is having Zogren syndrome provided any one or more of these antibodies are present and they are getting transferred. Having said that, only the presence of antibodies in the mother is not sufficient, there are still unexplained phenomena why only 2% of mothers who have anti rho anti la anti RNP, their children develop. 98% uh, do not develop any neonatal lupus erythematosus, so we don't know the reason. However, epidemiologic studies have clearly shown that severity of disease in the mother does not determine the child will have neonatal LE or not. So, option C is false and so this is the correct answer. Let us have a look at the some of the key statements that you need to remember regarding pathophysiology of this condition. So, Nelson says neonatal lupus erythematosus is not an active fetal disease. It is not an active fetal autoimmune disease. It arises due to passive transfer of uh, transplacental transfer of IgG anti bodies. Secondly, there is no ongoing immune dysregulation in the neonate but may develop autoimmune diseases in the future. So, the same child in the future can develop, right? Also, siblings can develop uh, autoimmune condition but active immune dysregulation in the newborn period is not present. NLE strongly correlates with maternal uh, levels of anti-Rho, anti-La and anti-RNP antibodies. Presence of antibodies and their titers, but it does not sufficient, it is not sufficient enough to cause NLE in all cases. As I have told you, only 2% of mothers who carry these antibodies, they are able to produce, their babies tend to develop NLE, right? Risk of NLE is independent of the severity and symptoms present in the mother with SLE. So, mother with asymptomatic SLE can have a child with severe uh, neonatal lupus erythematosus and a mother with, uh, you know, severe manifestation of SLE. If she does not have antibodies of anti rho anti anti rnp still the baby may not be uh, having neonatal LE. The child will be absolutely fine. And NLE can also develop if the mother has Jogren syndrome. So these are the key points that you need to remember regarding the pathophysiology of the condition. Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from PrepLadder.